doing. Um, so I'm going to go over the uh, refrigerator, uh, Frigidaire top mount refrigerator. I've talked about these diagrams before, um, but I'm actually doing some different things now. Um, again, a lot of people uh, have a hard time when you talk about a diagram and I can show you a line or a circuit on the diagram how power goes through but if you haven't really opened the machine up or don't know what a thermostat looks like or a thermal fuse looks like on paper it's real easy to follow a straight line but then you go to the machine and you're like I don't even know if I'm looking at a thermal fuse and where it is in the machine and mm -hmm. all this lectures and classes that we give you know also require you guys on your own to get some old machines and 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 just try to find parts on the diagram that the machine you're working on like say okay I'm gonna find every part on this diagram and I'm gonna find it in that machine and the next thing is to figure out what that part does um, so that that's an important thing that you guys have to do that we can't do online I can give you all kinds of practice I can give you all kinds of lectures and videos but you really need to take your own time and explore and learn the components of the machine as well so I'm first gonna go to the data side of that text sheet that you had um, this is the back side not the diagram side and uh, if you look at this text sheet there's a few things that I want to go over um, that might help you in troubleshooting and understanding certain things about the machine. So if we look, and I'll zoom in and, and make it a little bit bigger on the screen, and then I'll just move it as I cover the material. Um, so performance data, capacitor run or induction run. First of all, what are they talking about, capacitor run, induction run? What are they actually talking about? Is they talking about the, the amount of power that it takes to kickstart the compressor? Um, not so much the amount of power, but y you are on the right track that they're talking about the compressor. They're saying capacitor run or induction run, but they're not saying capacitor run compressor, induction run compressor. I'll show you both of what they are on the diagram, but uh, it's just the way the wires are in a circuit. This is not a inverted compressor. This is just a standard compressor with a relay and an overload. But some of the things that are important to look at is this 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 95 degree or 90 degrees Fahrenheit that these are these are like the operating temperatures that are ideal for this compressor to be. So if if you're running over 90 degrees on that compressor, that could be an indication that you're having a problem. Uh, within the sealed system or the compressor itself. So the temperatures here, just to give you an idea of what the ambient temperatures around the compressors are going to be, the compressor shouldn't be much hotter. I have a lot of guys that tell me, yeah, the compressor is hot. Well, how hot is hot? You know, a 90 degree compressor, if you touch it, may feel warm or hot to you, but 120 degree compressor would be a lot hotter. Uh, using an infrared gun, trying to find out the temperatures will be important. And one of the uh, big deciding factors on the temperatures that you're going to get across your compressor is what type of condenser it has. If it has a condenser with a fan motor that blows air over it, it's going to run cooler than what they call a static condenser. And that's the one where the condenser is behind the fridge and there's no fan on the machine. Now if you look at it, Operating time 25 to 35 percent, 45 to 55 percent. That is, if this unit is running in 65 degree weather, like they're up north or something, it's going to run only 25 to 35 percent of the time. But I live in Miami, our appliances are going to run as high as 50, 60 percent of the time. And customers may complain, my refrigerator is always running. Well, that's impossible because refrigerators do have a defrost cycle, so it's not always running. And if it always ran, it would freeze the refrigerator. So uh, always running to them is every time they walk by, they notice it running. But if you look, we could have a 60% run time if you're in a warm weather environment or it's summertime or something like that. It's in the garage. Um, your freezer temperature at 
this ambient temperature is going to be approximately 2 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit or at 90 degrees we might get it down to 0 degrees I don't know why the freezer would actually get colder on the um, on a higher ambient temperature you would think it wouldn't get as cold uh, I had something very similar happen to an ice machine I'm working on I'm gonna try to put a video together for that and I have to finish the fryer um, Okay. The ice machine that I'm working on at school is a big commercial machine and it has a water cooled condenser. It means water flows over the condenser instead of a fan. Well there's a valve that controls that water and the valve got corroded inside where it wasn't closing. So the water was always running over the condenser. And then you would think, okay, so what's the problem with that? I want the water to cool the condenser. I don't care if it's running all the time. Well one, it's going down the drain so it's going to cost you a lot of money in water but the other problem was is that the water flow over the condenser was too much too frequent and the actual temperature of the condenser was too low what do you think would happen in a refrigerator if your condenser was too cold so in other words your condenser here if you look uh, your condenser temperature would be, um, well, they don't really tell you that condenser temperature, um, but your condenser temperature would normally be about 110 degrees, 100 degrees, something like that, about 15, 20 degrees above the ambient temperature outside the box. But what effect would it have if the condenser was too cold? It will freeze ice uh, faster than it's supposed to. Yeah. Actually, this ice maker, the and, I, and I'll have it in the video when I when I when I put it together. I don't have the picture available right this second, but this ice maker, the evaporator. Oh wait, I might actually find it. The evaporator wasn't um, wasn't filling up with ice like it was supposed to. So you would get like half half a frozen evaporator. And you say, well, why is that? Well, if the condenser is cooler, remember, refrigerators work off of temperature and pressure. It'd almost be like you're low on Freon if your condenser pressure or temperature is too low. So your evaporator would not completely freeze, and that was what was happening with this ice machine, is that it acted like you were low on Freon or a partial restriction or something because you weren't getting enough pressure into the evaporator so you, your compressor and your evaporator or, or condenser and your evaporator pressures and temperatures are very important that they are each what they're supposed to be because you would say well hey if my condenser is cooler well be it the compressor ain't gonna work as hard yeah it isn't gonna work as hard because your compressor temperature and pressure is gonna be lower if your condenser pressure is lower and then in that case your evaporator pressure is going to be lower and you're not going to have a full evaporator so again that's important I didn't want to get into refrigeration I was trying to get to the schematic so I'm going to keep moving here unless you guys have any questions um, your low side pressure says cut in so when the compressor cycles off uh, on temperature um, when the pressure gets to about 8 to 16 degrees that's about the time frame that the unit's going to kick back on um, and then the high side pressure uh, that's the last one third of the cycle like just before the compressor is going to shut off these are the pressures you're going to have and again look at the pressure here on 65 degrees Fahrenheit is 110 to 120 psi but at 90 degrees we're running 150 175 psi that's a little high um, I would say about 125 to 140 be about good as far as pressure. I've never seen a, a 134A system, you know, running, you know, uh, 175 normal. Um, here we got defrost specifications, cut in and cut out of the thermostat. I'm going to talk a little bit about defrost thermostats today. So cut in and cut out. What does it mean cut in and what does it mean cut out? Anybody have any ideas? Does it mean when the compressor kick on and off? 
not the compressor this is the defrost thermostat and the defrost heater mm -hmm. here so that is when the thermostat will close when it, they're using the term cutting and this is when the thermostat will open so if you went into defrost and the heater was working once the area behind the evaporator reaches about 50 degrees that thermostat's gonna cut out or open turning our heater off and the cut in is okay now it's done defrosting the timer went back into cooling now the evaporator started cooling down well the defrost thermostat will not close until the temperature gets about nine degrees Fahrenheit back there then that thermostat will close and allow it the heater to work for another cycle um, so if it doesn't get colder than that it's not going to allow the heater to work um, again the cut in and cut out they're so far apart because the cut out is more the temperature of the air back there the cut in would be what is it the air temperature too Is it the temperature inside the uh, freezer, the box? The actually, the actually, the thermostat's connected to what we call the suction line of the evaporator. It's the one that's going back to the compressor. So when the unit's running in cooling, the actual thermostat is sensing the evaporator tubing temperature, not the air temperature. But the cutout is going to be more the air temperature that causes the thermostat to cut it out. Now the important thing about it is that you could just keep a universal defrost thermostat on your truck and as long as it's about 48, 50 degree thermostat it's going to be fine. You don't have to have the actual manufacturer thermostat as long as the temperatures are close and I will point that out on another slide here where I have the actual thermostats. Now it's got a note here, mechanical timer, defrost for 30 minutes every 10 hours of compressor run time. So back in the day the timers were every 8 hours, they were 6 hours, they had 10 hours, they had 12 hour timers and that means they would not defrost except for every eight hours so that'd be three times a day it would defrost now the thing is is that the government told manufacturers hey we gotta cut back we gotta stop using so much electricity so they put the thermostat in front of the timer and when the thermostat said the refrigerators closed the thermostat would open up to shut everything down but the timer would stop running so the timers not counting the minutes when it's in uh, or, or it's it's cycled the refrigerator off on temperature then when the thermostat closes again the timer starts running again so that's what they're saying 10 hours of compressor runtime when the refrigerator is cold compressor don't run timers not running either and we'll look at that in the diagram now electronic timer ADC which stands for automatic defrost control we're going to talk about that today too defrost up to 24 minutes every 6 to 72 hours how many days is 72 hours that's almost three days three times 24 is 72 so it could go three days without defrosting and we'll talk about how does that work so they put a timer instead of a mechanical timer they put electronic control board as the timer and it uses other factors to determine defrost not just time so we'll talk about that so this is just basic electrical heater uh I don't, heater voltage 165 ac how is that possible if your refrigerator don't have more than 127 volts max but anyways this is not that important but I do want to bring up this one thing the ice maker connector plug connections uh, this is where the ice maker plugs into the fridge 
This is a mechanical ice maker. I did a little video on some ice makers the other day. Um, this is the one where it makes the half moon crescent shaped ice cubes. If you wanted to send power to the water valve using this diagram, what two wires would you send power to feed the water valve? The yellow. Okay, the yellow is the water valve, but you need two wires. So the yellow and what? So the green yellow. Green yellow is what? Uh, ground. You don't want to hook up ground to anything unless oh. it's a safety. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant uh, the light blue. The what? The light blue? No. We're going to use the black, which is what? Line one coming in. And then there's a switch in the ice maker to send power to the water valve. And so if we just jump it, so we'll have a plug here, an ice maker plug. It's going to have four wires in it. Okay? And it's going to be green, yellow, black, light blue. And yellow and black are the two in the middle. So if we just run a jumper between these two, that will send power to my water valve. Now this is just a regular top mount unit. It's not as easy to do it with, a, uh, with another unit. We'll get into those on another, another lecture when it has a filter inside and multiple valves and everything else. But you're sending power from line one to the yellow wire which goes down to the water valve. Now, I was going to talk a little bit about this and then I noticed a mistake on Frigidaire's wiring diagram because we said black to yellow, right? Mm -hmm. So, real quick, I'll get to that in one second. So here they're telling you to insert a screwdriver. Some of these have a flat notch in there. You can rotate this gear and you're going to rotate this gear counterclockwise so this gear turns clockwise. This is the one that turns the fingers. That's the motor. And by turning it a little bit, you can get it to start its own cycle. Now if there's ice in the mold, it won't drop. And you got to watch the other video. I'm not going to get too deep into that. But there are two other things I want to point out. Is that one full turn is equal to... 20 cc's so if I turn this screw one complete revolution that's equal to a half an ounce more or less so if a customer is complaining of cube size and you think it's not filling up with water you could back the screw up a little at one complete turn and fill it up a half an ounce more now one thing you would do before you do that is you'd unscrew the ice maker from the wall and you'd start the cycle by turning the gear and you'd use a little cup to measure the water that would come out to the ice maker. You'd have it go into a cup and we're looking for between three and four ounces of water. So if you needed to add more, that's how you would do it on the screw of this ice maker. Now let's get to this diagram, all right? Because we said that if I wanted to put power to this water valve, I'd go from line one to yellow on a water valve. Now this is the circuit for it and we're going to look at the one on the right. So I'm going to like zoom in on it and bring it a little bit bigger here for you guys to see. One second. Well, if we look at this unit I'm going to point out the four wires. We have number one, which is green yellow. So where is that? That's right here. If you look, this is ground to the mold and everything, and this is green yellow. Number two is yellow, and that'll be right about here, yellow. Number three would be what? Number three is black line one that's coming in here. And number four is light blue, which is neutral. Where's neutral, guys? Oh, well, yellow's going to neutral, but they say light blue is neutral. There's a mistake there. Mm -hmm. Let's let's look a little closer. If I'm gonna jump black to yellow, black being line one and I jump it to yellow, that's no good. I can't put a wire to line one in neutral. They screwed up because what is this here that I circle? This is what? The water fill switch. And the water fill switch sends power to my water valve 
and then it goes to neutral. Well, the neutral is, you know, down behind the water valve. There's a light blue wire coming from the ice maker to the water valve? No, it's the yellow wire according to this, or they made a mistake because yellow here is neutral, light blue is the water valve, but they're saying yellow is the water valve, light blue is the neutral. So I have some Frigidaire refrigerators at my school, and Monday I'm going to go in and confirm which color wire goes to the water valve, um, because in Frigidaire diagrams, if we go back to, did I have the diagram here yet? No, I haven't got the diagram yet. We'll go to the diagram next page. If we look at Frigidaire diagrams, let's look at this diagram right here. Line one is black, neutral is light blue. They have neutral going to the water valve. That's not right. Neutral should be going to to neutral on the power cord and yellow should be going to the water valve. So we need to confirm that. And I will get some pictures of the one I have at my school and then next week's lecture I'll I'll highlight that and go over that. So that brings us to this wiring diagram here. We're going to disregard everything below this dotted line here which is a freezer light and the dotted line means if it has one this is how it be wired so we're going to look at everything above here the first thing we want to look at is cooling circuit for the refrigerator so we're going to send power in here on line one and we're going to go out here on neutral and I'll use light blue as a color for neutral and I'm just going to use yellow as a color for uh, line one only because uh, black would hide everything and you can't see the words behind it so uh, we'll do the this uh, uh, here we go we'll do this one for neutral and this one for line one so power comes in and goes to what component first for the cooling you guys finish looking at the diagram for what I drew and What's the first part that the power goes to? The defrost timer. Not the defrost timer. Follow this line down. Okay, hold on. Hold control. Follow this line down, and then it jumps to the right here. Yeah. Oh, I can't see it. It's so small. But you didn't print one out? No, I didn't get this one. I did everything. The cold control? This. It's the cold control. Let me make this bigger then. Make it bigger. How's that? Yeah, cold control. Go straight there. Okay, yeah, so right. I'll have to move my pictures over, but the pictures are important because I'm going to start connecting stuff together here. So okay. I might have to make the pictures a little smaller or something. Okay, so let's, let's re-highlight that again where line one comes in and yeah. goes down here, and the first thing it does is come to the cold control. This is our cold control here, a thermostat. Uh, point out a little bit about the thermostat. I'll zoom in on it and then make it small again. One second. If we look at this cold control or thermostat, it is a thermostat. This is one of our terminals. The other one you can sort of just barely see behind all this plastic. These are our two wires, power in, power out. This box holds the switch that connects these two together. The switch is either open or closed. And right here is our um, is where our knob goes to increase or decrease pressure on this dome here. So what happens is inside of this is either a gas or a fluid, like a like an oil or a fluid, and when it's heated or cooled it causes it to put pressure here or back this way and when you turn the dial you're putting pressure against it where it takes more pressure this way to cycle the switch and then there's a piece of metal in here that the switch goes like this here here and out and then this piece opens and closes the switch so power just comes in goes through and out if you ever get an old one just pry this part up 
and pull this out and you can actually see the switch inside and how it activates but that is the coal control and this capillary tube notice it has this long plastic tubing around it does anybody know why we have plastic tubing around that uh, um, that capillary on the thermostat it is an insulation it is an insulation but insula why do we want to insulate it because that's what's sensing the temperature that capillary tube that's what's telling the thermostats what's going on you don't want it to get wet uh, we don't want to get wet yeah that's not going to hurt it too much but if you ever worked on a top mount refrigerator the thermostats like right in the center in the ceiling so is the timer here and um, it's right where the air comes from the freezer so if this is right where the air comes with the freezer it could do something called short cycle if someone changes the thermostat a lot of time it doesn't come with this plastic it's either clear or white depending on the thermostat you're supposed to slide the old one off and put it on the new capillary tube of the new thermostat because what happens as the air is coming out of the freezer, the, the freezer is zero degrees. And it could trick that thermostat thinking the temperature of the fridge is that cold if it's blowing right on the capillary tube. So the plastic helps reduce that short cycling to make sure it cycles on the temperature of the refrigerator and not temperature of the air coming in from the freezer. So that is what that is. Uh, uh, that that is what the covers for so if we we follow the circuit the circuit goes from the cold control into the timer on terminal number one when it comes in it has two paths it can go one is down to the timer motor and that is to advance the timer so if we if we change colors now to light blue for neutral coming out of the timer which is neutral this is going to run here and run up and out the circuit. That's just for the timer motor. So we're using pins one and pin three. So if we look here, and I'll zoom in on this one just a little bit, you can see the numbers here. So power's coming in on pin one, and that's important to know that, whoops, I didn't want to do that color. So power's coming in here, and the timer motor is going out pin 3, so we're going to come out here that inside of this unit, sometimes they have a diagram drawn on it, you'll see this, and you'll see a diagram of a motor. That is your timer motor. If you don't think your timer is advancing, we could check it for voltage to see if we're getting voltage to the timer and then we can also check it for continuity but we need to look at this note right here it said notice this product contains a capacitor in series with the motor use a 10,000 ohm scale and test as a capacitor not as a motor so if you're checking this unit, what they're saying is that right here, in series with the motor, you're going to have a capacitor. And you cannot go put your meter here and here and get resistance of the motor, but what you're going to do is you're going to see if the motor's good and the capacitor is good, the needle will jump or the numbers will jump and return back to infinity. So they're telling you that you won't be able to read a timer motor for resistance because it has a capacitor built in. And a lot of them do, and not a lot of them have that note there telling you that's what it does. So if we look a little bit closer, there's more information on here. I'm just going to erase this here. This is an 8-hour timer, 30-minute defrost, just like the instructions said. 8 hours. Well, no, it was 10 hours 30 minutes this is an eight hour timer now let me ask you guys a question you got an eight hour timer on your truck 
you don't have a 10 hour timer and a timer's bad. Could you use this timer? Yeah, but it is a cycle on quicker though, on and off, right? It'll defrost sooner, but go back to the note that we said, look, the thermostat sends power to this timer motor. So when the thermostat says the fridge is cold, it's open, your timer's not running. So even though it says eight hour, that's not eight hours by your clock on, on the wall, it's at eight hours of compressor runtime where the compressor runs an hour and shuts off, I still got seven more hours of that compressor to run before it will go and defrost. Okay? So that is the timer motor circuit. Let's take a look at the actual timer circuit. Let me just clean up some of my notes here. So you saying you could use the original or no? Yes, you can. You could use it. All it's going to affect is the efficiency of the refrigerator. It's going to defrost a little more, but that's good. Um, the efficiency of the refrigerator is when the evaporator gets too much ice on it, you don't get proper airflow and you don't get the right temperature. The evaporator is 15 degrees below zero and the ice on the defrost is is 32. That's 47 degrees warmer. So if your evaporator is covered in ice, the air is flowing over the ice which is 47 degrees warmer than the tube. And it's not going to cool the fridge. It might just barely freeze the stuff in the freezer. So um, if you changed it to an 8 from a 10 or a 12 or a 6 to an 8 or a 10, it's going to be fine. Because if we looked at the, at, at the note on the automatic defrost control uh, right here, is it could take up to 72 hours before it even defrosts. So 72 hours, I said, was three days it could go without defrosting. Defrosting does not need to happen every day, okay? Defrosting just has to clean the ice off. If you take longer to defrost, you're gonna have more ice on your tubing. Yeah, it's not gonna cool as well if you go four or five days. But if you went to someone's house and you said, oh wow, it's a bad defrost heater, one of those GE glass tube ones that break all the time, I have to get you a heater. Well, customers will say, well, I'm not going to have a fridge till you come back. If you take and defrost all the ice off the evaporator, which you need to do anyways when you change the heater, so defrost all the ice while you're there, you got five to six, six days before enough ice builds up that the customer is going to start having cooling problems. It's going to give you five days to get those parts and come back, and the customer's fridge is going to work fine. You know, to, I always tell them, look, don't go out and spend $400 at the grocery store and pack this fridge until I change the part, but you can use it as a fridge. You can put ice cream and meat in the freezer, and you can put milk in the fridge. It's going to be fine until I come back. It's only if it's going to take more than a week. Now you got to be careful, okay? So going back to the, yes. Sure. Now with that uh, defrosting cycle like that, does it also pertain to when um, you open and close the refrigerator a lot? Say if you go out of town and it's not open as much. Uh, well, I'll answer that question when I get to the, when I get to the adaptive defrost. Okay. okay, I'll go through the circuitry and explain all the little nuances about that. So I want to start off with some of the simple stuff and then get a little more complicated. So yeah, so they put the cold control in series with the timer motor and normally the thermostat used to be here coming off number four, which is going to our fans and our compressor. So the timer would run all the time on, on the early refrigerators. Later they moved the thermostat to before the timer which delayed the timer and made a defrost less and that way they can tell the government, hey I made my refrigerator more energy efficient. It doesn't defrost three times a day. You know? Um, so it's where the thermostat's located. It's not 
the type of timer that makes it what they say continuous run or con cumulative run. Cumulative run is this way where the timer is controlled by the thermostat where it has to accumulate so many hours of refrigerator run time where if you put it after the timer and put it on the cooling circuit, the thermostat, it's continuous run. That, that timer runs all the time and it's going to defrost every eight hours. Okay, so we have components. I'm just going to identify the components and then we're going to do a little bit more with these components on another slide. So we got a defrost timer here. has four terminals. They're marked 2, 1, 4, 3. Here they are, 2, 1, 4, 3. Which one of those terminals, I'm not going to um, uh, give you guys the answer here, but which one of those terminals is line 1 coming in? 2, 1, 4, or 3? Well, look at line 1 was yellow, right? So we come in and number 1 is yellow coming in feeding the timer. So this number one is line one coming in. That's the power coming right from the wall. There's, not, there's nothing in between it but the thermostat. So the thermostat gets power here, which is this line here going to the thermostat. And then from the thermostat, we go to pin one on the timer. So from here, we go to pin one on the timer. So the power comes from here into the timer, all right? So if we're going to do the timer motor circuit, we come out the timer on what pin? Two. Pin, mm. pin three. Mm. Oh, it's three, okay. And that one's going to go to neutral, okay? Mm. So we have two more terminals. And those two terminals are terminal two and terminal four. Which one of those terminals is going to my defrost heater? Two. Yes, number two comes in, goes down, and goes to defrost heater. So this one's going to my defrost heater. I don't have a heater on this screen. We'll do it later. Um, but number four is going to what? The compressor. Compressor. Evaporator fan. Evaporator and condenser oh. fan. So number four is going to come out and feed my evaporator fan, my condenser fan and my compressor and then all these gonna have a light blue going back to neutral so if all three of these are not working on a refrigerator you get a call simple refrigerator all three of them are not working give me some examples of what parts could be bad and what would you check the time order the timer motor or the timer? Timer motor. Well, you wouldn't check the timer motor. The timer motor just advances, so you could manually advance it. It's got a little place for a screwdriver here. You could turn it. But you would check the timer switch right here, one to four. There'd be a switch in here. There's two switches in this timer. The middle one and the top one and the middle one rides on a cam here so as it rotates it either drops down here and goes to cooling or pushes up there and goes to defrost so power comes in goes right back out to number four and feeds my fans and my compressors and that's this switch here power comes in goes out number four which is right here and feeds my fans and my compressors okay so the things I would check is my cold control. If it's bad, would my fans run or my compressor run? No, power will not get to them. If the timer switch is bad, which is one to four, none of these will work, okay? Now it works the opposite way. You go to someone's house and they say, my fridge is not cooling. You open up the freezer and you hear inside, that's your fan running, right? So now you go to the back of the fridge and you see the condenser fan running, but your compressor is not running. Where do I start testing? The compressor. 
because if the condenser fan and evaporator fans working well my timers good and my thermostats good even if one of them are working all three of those parts need to run when the thermostat shuts off all three shut off when the thermostat closes they all come on so if you see one of those three parts working you see the condenser fan working but not the evaporator fan it's not my controls it's probably the fan if the condenser fans not working but the evaporator fans working it's probably the condenser fan if both the compressor and condenser fan are not working it's still not the controls if the evaporator fans working but you may have a wire or something down there where they both connect that would stop both of them at the same time it depends on how it's wired but if one of those three are working it's not my timer it's not my thermostat it's neither one of them it has to be with the components or the wiring and very rare do we have broken wires any questions on that okay let's move on to the next slide well this is the diagram and I highlighted it for you on the last circuit but I'm just gonna highlight it again and I'm just doing the cooling components now power whoops I should have done the yellow the yellow first power comes in goes here goes through the thermostat into the timer here this is still line one it goes out the timer terminal four goes up here and goes into my evaporator fan goes into my condenser fan and it says on dynamic models only that's why it's a dotted line it says if it had it this is how we would put it and then it goes into the compressor now my neutral comes out the compressor light blue out the condenser fan light blue and out the evaporator fan light blue so you see if this or this is bad none of them will work now my biggest complaint about this is one you don't know the color wires you do see the light blue and the red but not all of the wires colors are there two couldn't they have drawn the timer and the thermostat just a little bit easier to follow instead of all this spaghettiness where they're going around and around and around so I redrew the diagram just the cooling part of it right now so this is the one we just looked at I'm gonna zoom in on the one here it's the same same diagram just easier to follow because if we go here line one power comes in line one co power comes in goes into the cold control just like we said here power comes in and goes to the cold control and from the cold control it goes to terminal one right into the timer well here goes terminal one to the timer and it goes down to the time motor and to my cooling components isn't that easier to read isn't that easier to follow I, why doesn't the manufacturer do these things I don't know I can't tell you why they draw them like they do but they could have drawn this whole diagram where it just would have been perfectly straight lines bam 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 it took me a few minutes I had to take that diagram on the left and do this on the right but I redid my own diagram that's how it should be where power goes into the timer or into the thermostat first then the timer these three either one of these bad none of them work if one of these are working and the others are not the problem is with those parts okay go to the next slide so we're gonna redo it again the circuitry like like I did for you on the other screen I'm gonna rotate the timer a little bit like this and I'm just gonna say power comes in and goes to the cold control so power comes in and goes to the cold control comes out the cold control goes into the timer number one so it goes out here it goes right in timer number one it goes through a switch in the timer to four so timer number one is here and I'm just gonna draw the switch from one to four like that and it goes out four and it goes 
to my evaporator fan, my condenser fan, and my compressor. So I got this wire goes to my evaporator fan, my condenser fan, and my compressor. And then on the other side they have another wire here going out to neutral. So then coming out here they all jump together and they all go right back to the power cord which would be like right here. That's the path. That's what we're looking at here on the diagram. Now I didn't go detail into the compressor circuitry. I didn't know how much time I had and how much I have to cover but I still have uh, the defrost circuit and the ADC board to go so we might go just a little bit over the hour guys. Um, so any questions about this circuit right now, the cooling circuit? How it works, the components, um, why did they do something a certain way, something you don't understand? Ask the questions, you know, that's why it's live and that's why we're here is that if you have a question you don't understand, you know, you know, it can help us if you ask, you know? So if there's, mm -hmm. got a question? I have a quick question. Sure. So is, is it a timer that switches between heating and cooling, or is it, I mean, it, it is, it looks like, according to the diagram, that timer switches between cooling and heating. That is and correct. I thought, I thought the cold control has something to do with switching between Cool it just control it just controls the timer and how fast the timer runs okay so the cold control does not control defrost only the timer controls defrost and that's what that switch does that's number two on the timer there's another switch terminal here so when we're this way we're cooling when we go into defrost this one will open and then these two will close and send power to defrost and if we go we're in the defrost circuit. <laughs> now I'm going to talk about how the components work on the defrost circuit. So I eliminated one and four in the timer and let's talk about how current flows and I might be able to answer your question a little better by looking at the circuit here now for the defrost. Power comes in, goes through the cold control, feeds my timer motor and then here it goes to the timer switch and goes here to the defrost heater and then the defrost thermostat and out. So first of all, I didn't put here, this is number one on the timer here. Well, let me change the color. Um, this is number one here. I just moved number one to the other side so it's easier to, to draw it going in. So what two pins on the timer are defrost? Looking at the diagram, power goes in what number and out the other? Is that one and two? One and two. two, that's correct. So let's take let's take a look at this circuit and how these parts will be wired in, in that circuit. That the first thing is line one comes in and goes to the cold control. So like before, line one comes in, goes to the cold control, and then from the cold control it goes to pin number one on the timer. So it comes out the other side and goes to pin number one on the timer here and then it goes through the timer to switch number two and hopefully this is the question you got is that the timer has a switch inside here which is one and two not one and four and then this one goes directly to the heater so I'm going to go out here and feed the heating element and from the heating element I'm going to go to the defrost thermostat we have two wires here which one of those wires am I going to connect the heater to the black one? Uh, it don't have a black one. It has a dark blue and a light blue. The defrost thermostat. Right here. These two wires. See them right there? There's a light blue and a dark blue one. It shouldn't matter, right? It shouldn't matter, but if we're going to follow the wiring diagram, it does matter. It's like a bowl. I mean, what's the point? <laughs> It, it, it doesn't matter in its physical operation, but we try to keep things organized because when you start moving wires around, then you get confused and lost. Well, what is neutral right here? Light blue. So that the heater is going to go to dark blue, which is, this one's going to be the dark blue one, 
And then the light blue one, I'm not going to use it down here. This light blue one is just going to come out and go back to the plug, which would be this wire. Yes, it doesn't matter. On a two-wire switch, any mechanical switch that has just two wires, it really doesn't matter which one is power in and which one is power out. That's a given. But sometimes we have to color follow color wires only so it makes sense the direction at which it flows. And if it has a light blue on the thermostat, I'm going to use the light blue on the thermostat for neutral. Okay? Now, real quick, I'm going to zoom in on this thermostat because this thermostat is an L47 minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. So what does that mean? It shuts off at 47, comes back at uh, 25. At 22. What? Yeah, it, I'll, I'll flip it over minus so that... Minus 22, 47 minus 22. Yes. 25. So the L what stands for the limit. You'll see that on dryer thermostats too, is what is the limit of that thermostat. So if you see, here's the clip. This is what's clipping it to the suction line of the evaporator. Remember I told you it senses the temperature of the suction line, where in the, the earlier information it said at 9 degrees is when that one closes. This one closes at 22. But when it goes into defrost, the heater comes on and starts heating up back there. Once the area behind the panel, not the whole freezer, because at 47 degrees you start melting food, once the area behind the evaporator cover gets about 47 degrees, it's going to open up and shut off the heater. When it goes back into cooling, it's going to close at 22 degrees. Could I use this? On the, on the refrigerator here that says this thermostat here cycles at um, uh, 48 degrees. Oh no, that's the ice maker one, I'm sorry. Defrost. Cut in and cut out. It cuts out at 50 and cuts in at 9. Can I use this one? Mm -hmm. You can. I mean it, it cuts out at 47 instead of 50. It's 3 degrees. It's not a big deal. The cut-in doesn't matter. As long as it's cold enough, it's going to close. When it cuts in, it's not going to start heating again because it's back in the cooling cycle. So this timer is back in the cooling cycle instead of the defrost cycle. So that's not going to, it's not going to make effect. You could carry that up on your truck and use it just about any refrigerator. It doesn't matter. It's a thermostat. So look at the limit of the one in the refrigerator. And you're within two or three degrees, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about the cut in, worry about the cut out so that you're not going too much hotter. Okay? But at, at a universal thermostat, as long as these numbers are within two or three degrees and the main one is the limit one, you can use any thermostat you want, guys. You don't have to have the exact OEM one. The only time you have to have the OEM one is when, guys? Do you know? Manufacturer warranty. Manufacturer warranty. So this is what you do. Man, I don't have the exact one, and this is a warranty call for Frigidaire. Dang, now I'm going to have to order it. I have to come back. Now, I lose money if I come back. I make money if I complete on the first job. Hmm, but Frigidaire won't pay me if I don't have an invoice from Marcone or my parts distributor for that part. Okay, I'm going to put the generic one on the customer's fridge. I'm going to order the OEM one and use the invoice when I get it, telling them I put that one on the customer's fridge and get my credit for the part too. And I get a free thermostat. You follow what I'm saying? Come on, guys. <laughs> yep, I get it. So you use your universal one. You buy an OEM one. You tell Frigidaire, hey, I bought this for Mrs. Jones' refrigerator. But you put the generic one on her fridge. It's going to work. No one will ever know. And then you got this one for your truck. So you never, you're not out of thermostat. It'll work. Okay.
I'm not trying to tell you to steal from a manufacturer. Do not, you know, put me out there like that. But if you have to get the customer's fridge going, you have to get the customer's fridge going. Well, may, I, may I have a task, a question, quick question? Of course you can, anytime. Go ahead. Um, uh, I know I replaced on a GE a thermostat and it was rated L140-110. Uh, why, why such a big difference between manufacturers? L, Is it the same L, idea to shut it off when it's too hot? Well, let me ask a question. L40 and, yes. and minus no, 10? No, L140. 140-110 on GE. That was not a, that's not a defrost thermostat. No, it, it is. I actually have it. I, I'd, I'd like to see pictures of that because at 140 degrees, all of your food would, all your ice would melt in your refrigerator and all your, all your food would melt. I can share the part number. Um, if you uh, could, it just put, 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 put. thermostat WR50X. One zero zero sixty five. Hold on, I'm Googling can it I, right now. Can I, can I text? Uh, can I text it somehow? Hold, hold on, no, I, uh, I, I'm Googling it right now. I'm pulling it up right now as we speak. Yes, that's the first one. Okay, yes, I'm trying to find to see if we got specs on it. Sixty five, yes. It's L140 minus 30. That, I don't know. I'm going to look into that. I do have a lot of connections with GE. So I'll come back to you on that. I'm going to save this yeah. page because... because it's, it's confusing. You said that temperature is the coil temperature or outside temperature? That's the temperature... Okay, the 140 that's supposed to cut it out is the temperature of the air around the evaporator yes, it's I behind see. the panel but if I put 140 degrees there that's not good now yeah that I, was confusing. I will <laughs> have, I to have to check to the water to check it if it uh, yeah opens. <laughs> that's 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 extremely high but like I said if you had a thermostat that 140 degree thermostat is what a dryer uses 140 to 160 on high heat that's why I'm saying I've never seen that. I, I will I will get back to you on that because th I've never seen that. That's way above and beyond what I've what I've. <laughs> but so when you said a uh, universal thermostat, what well, what what's the rating on that one? Can I can it be? Well, you you can buy you can buy you can buy them for any refrigerator. You can buy them for any temperature cut in and cut out setting. So I say universal. You can buy what they call a a. Was it Uline or some of these other companies that make aftermarket parts? Mm -hmm. And as long as the temperature range is within within a few degrees of what the actual unit is, then you're good. Mm -hmm. Okay, a 48, 4820, 4810 mm -hmm. is ninety nine percent of the boxes, <laughs> except for the GE, which I have to find out. That's safer than using this one as a universal thermostat. <laughs> yes. Uh, but but also if it's designed to get hotter back there we need to find out may it, it might not completely defrost because GE's use those radiant elements which are like glass tubes mm -hmm. and it is possible they generate a lot more heat in a short period of time so it could be that high a temperature because of the radiant thermostat I, I'm sorry the radiant heater so let me look into that okay Thank you. All right, so now we're talking about the ADC, Automatic Defrost Control. And if we look at this unit, it has a lot more wires than our standard uh, defrost timer. And I went and got this board, and then I said, hmm, this board isn't exactly this refrigerator, because I was looking at how many wires here, and I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wires. And if you look here, there's numbers 1 through 11 and 2 through 12. It's got 12 pins. And we're not, we're not, we're not even using all 12. Now, it will still work like this one, but you, it's not interchangeable. There is an older design, and I did get it, I did get it before we started class, so I'm going to show you the older one. So let's take a look at this, and then I'll get into how it works. 
So here is the defrost control and these are the pins but this isn't the right timer. This one is, now they're both Frigidaire timers. This is old school, this is new school. And if we take this timer and rotate it, I'm going to make it bigger so you guys can see it. We got defrost out, cold control, compressor, neutral, defrost thermostat, black, line one, and door switch. There is a place for the fan, but it's not connected to this model. Now if we look at the picture here, the top one says defrost, which is this one. Second one down is cold control, and it says cold control, compressor, compressor, neutral, neutral, defrost, thermostat, line one, and door switch. So let's go back to the circuit, not so much this board. Now if we look, the ADC board any computer board that we have in the machine has to have its own power and neutral and it has to have power and neutral all the time okay in order for a board to work just imagine like your microwave you opened up the door if the microwave control board was connected to a door switch the clock would shut off and when you close the door you'd have to set the clock all the time the board and the microwave has to have power all the time the board on your refrigerator even when you go to the refrigerator and you turn the refrigerator off and all the lights are off even the displays off there's still power to the board and the board is still running the board is waiting when you press start it's accepting your command it's waiting for you to press start it is using electricity even when it's not working it's the same thing like your cell phone charger you may not have your phone plugged into it but the cell phone charger is drawing power not a lot but it's drawing power so this board has to have power all the time so if we look, we got line one comes in on, the, on this side, and I'll use yellow again. And line one goes directly to the board here, right? But then we got line one coming through the cold control. Why two line ones? One is four. One is four. Line one is, the, the one labeled line one is the one that's power all the time to the board, so the board always works. But the cold control is sending power into the timer, so one, it could cycle the compressor and everything, but two, but two, the board is monitoring compressor run time. So it knows how long the compressor has been running before it says, ah, oh, you know what, let's go ahead and defrost. Okay, this little thing right here, that's your ROM or your RAM, read-only memory or, or random access memory is most likely what they call ROM. So the manufacturer programs this chip with the software, that's how it does its thinking. That's like a hard drive of your computer. It, it, that's what programming to tell okay go to defrost and the refrigerator's been running too long now go and defrost that's all done by this little chip on this board here this is a relay this is what's sending power to the compressor and the fans there's another relay over here this is going to our compressor I'm, I'm sorry our defrost I take it back so line one is for power on the board all the time the cold control is allowing the board to monitor its cycling now I'm gonna go to light blue because I'm gonna feed this neutral here going out okay so line one and neutral are going to be power at the board as long as that refrigerator is plugged in whether refrigerator is running or not that board has power okay so let's look at a few more circuits well we got a circuit for the defrost thermostat and I'm just gonna put a dash line here here we got a circuit for the defrost heater and we got a circuit for compressor but it's also the fans and the compressor so what's going on here line ones coming in and going through 
this big relay right here and that relay is going to send power to the compressor which is also going to be the fans as well okay so the relay would be right here and so power comes into the board and goes out wait a minute then how would it control it that's not where the relay is at the relay would be connected where from the compressor to what L1 the cold control this is where the relay would be so if I went into this customers house all my fans and my compressors weren't working right mm -hmm. with a jumper wire I could tell you it's a bad time or a bad thermostat and I could do it in 30 seconds if I want the compressor to run I go there and the ladies compressor is not working I want the compressor to run if it's not running I got power here and here first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump cold control to compressor these two pins right here if I jump then and the thermostats good power will come in bypass the board and go to my compressor and fans if they come on what's wrong I went to the house no fans no compressor I jumped that pin and they all come on what's wrong the, is bad. the timer's bad is my thermostat good yes has to be because I'm using the power from the thermostat to feed the compressor so if I jumped here and the compressor still did not run then I jump line one to compressor instead of cold control now my compressor comes on well then my cold controls back so if I jump cold control to here and it don't run but then I jump line one to here and it does run then it's my cold control so for with just a little jump bar boom no don't run boom it runs okay I need a thermostat I'm done again this is how to follow the circuits and using the circuits so a question came up about the door and I'll go into the rest of these things here we have a wire coming here to the door switch so what is it monitoring the board is watching every time the customer opens and closes the door why because they're too fat and they eat too much <laughs> no every time you open a door you're letting the cold air out you're letting warm air with humidity back in so you're adding moisture to your system we're gonna start we're gonna have to defrost sooner than normal because the lady has it's Thanksgiving and she's got half the family there and everybody's going in and out the refrigerator every five minutes so we gotta defrost sooner so the board is watching every time this light switch goes on and off and it calculates hey man that door's been opened a hundred times in the past two days let's go ahead and defrost so it's monitoring the cold control to see how long the compressor runs it's monitoring the door switch to see how often the customer goes into defrost I'm sorry, it goes into the box. Now, let's look at the defrost circuit. Power comes in here. I'm supposed to go here from my cold control to my heater. That's fine. My heater don't work. What two pins do I jump? Cold control and defrost cold control and defrost and if the heater comes on we're good right what if the heater still don't work I must say. yeah but the fans and compressor were working mm -hmm. if you jump it out right now while the cold control is going would the compressor be running the same time the heater's running no yeah yeah let's just say you go to a customer's refrigerator you got the 
not this board let me get the other board so that you guys can see it uh, control C let me delete this one and put the other board there okay so we got this board and I'm gonna um, make it a little bit smaller because it's blurry and I know it's hard to read I'll move this diagram over here and I'm gonna put this board here so you go to this customer's house right you think it's a defrost problem. You open up the door, the fans are running, the compressor's running, it's not cooling well. You look in the back and you see all this frost back there. It's like, damn, this thing's not defrosting. Well, let me put in defrost. How do you put this frigidaire refrigerator in defrost? With the time, just turn it to a click it. This one doesn't turn. This is a control board. So we can't turn it. Now on the old side-by-sides, you opened up the refrigerator door and you hit the door switch on and off I think five times on off on off on off on off the light switch on off five times in a row the boards watching the door switch and the board will go into defrost just hit the, hit the light switch five times on off on off on off don't go too fast do it like on off on off on off like like that much time the board will see it see that and say oh they want me to go into defrost I'm going to defrost but if I go to this unit and the fans are running that means power is coming in through here and going to the compressor and the fans are running so if I go and I add a jumper now it'll send power to the heater but my fans and stuff are still running just so you know you could let me just clear this you could if you look here we're talking about con cold control and defrost heater so this one's defrost out and this is the cold control if it's a single plug you could take the whole plug off and on the plug itself that connected to the unit you could put the jumper on the plug on these two wires and that would be like jumping it like this so the power coming in doesn't even go to the board it just goes right to the heater you guys see what I'm talking about that mm -hmm. if you unplug it from the board and jump it it's not going to run the compressor and fans it's going to go right to the heater now what if it doesn't defrost you jumped it you know the cold control is good you jumped it you never saw your heater come on well damn it's all frozen back there it's gonna take me forever to get back there to test those components and if I defrost it I may get the defrost thermostat so warm it's gonna open and by the time I get to it it's open how do I know if it's the defrost heater or the defrost thermostat that's bad without having to take the whole refrigerator apart I've already got to the board because I'm jumping the board so I got access to the board how do we check the heater and how do we check the defrost thermostat? Check the resistance? Yes, but tell me, you're telling me over the phone, hey Richard, I need you to check resistance on the defrost heater. Okay, Ali, where do I put my meter leads? It's defrost thermostat and defrost heater. Ah, very good. If I put a meter lead here and put a meter lead here on the wires with it unplugged, I could check the resistance of the heater. Did I see that? So from the board, I can check their heater for resistance or continuity. But what about the defrost thermostat? How do I check that? Thermostat and neutral. Thermostat and neutral from the board. Very good. So the thermostat comes in, goes to the actual thermostat and it comes back to neutral so you could ohm out the defrost thermostat and ohm out the heater to see which part has failed and if, it, if it's a defrost thermostat you can go to your truck and get the universal thermostat and go put it on there <laughs> and get a completed call but this is the way you would test it if you can't get back there and can't get to those components so any thermostat and heater if you're lazy yeah, well, a lot of guys order both because they don't take the time to test anything and they just change the parts. 
I got a guy who changes a, changes ten parts on the machine, and then he calls me and says, oh, I need help. Oh, well, how can I help you? Well, I changed the board, the heater, the thermostat, and the timer, and it's still not working. Really? All those parts were bad, and it's still not working. He didn't bother to test anything. He's a parts changer. You guys can't afford to be parts changers. You have to know how to test components and what they do and how they work. And the only thing is experience and repetition. Like my videos and these lectures that I give you and all these videos that I'm putting together right now are going to be part of my home study course that I'm doing for wiring diagrams. I actually have chapter one and two up there but I don't have them visible because I have not embedded some videos that I want to embed in those chapters so that when you guys go through it it's a full interactive experience. You're going to have chapter questions that are, you're going to answer as you read and watch the videos and then you're going to have a chapter test for every one of the chapters and I'm going to try to take you even more in depth to pictorial diagrams, schematic diagrams and everything else. So I have I have a thing, but I apologize, guys. I, I wanted to have it out the 1st of February, but I work three jobs. I teach full-time, I own a repair company, and I do TMM. So it's very hard in between all those jobs to sit down and, and focus and write for a couple of hours a day. So I'm getting it done. You guys got to bear with me, but it'll be available to all of our paid members for free. And remember, guys, if you haven't been there, there's a, a self-study course for a sealed system on there where you can go and learn what is an evaporator. And then you, it gets deeper into the tools and the pressures and, and what is the restriction and everything else. That's available to all of our paid members, and it is on the website under the, the self-study. So... Um, this is pretty much what I wanted to do. I, I didn't have time to redraw it and just do the circuit, but um, this board is this refrigerator, and they label them for you here. So they tell you not only light blue, but they say neutral. Red is the compressor. So if you did take the wires off in your individual wires, you should be able to wire it up. And here's your two relays. I think the defrost relay is the bigger one and the cooling relay is a smaller one because the defrost heater draws so much more amperage. So on that other board, I might have been backwards where I labeled the big black relay uh, cooling relay. I think it's more like the defrost relay. But that's when you're jumping out, when you're going from the cold control to defrost out. It's probably going through this relay and back out. And then notice the compressors here, so the cold control goes to this one and goes back out there to the cold control. So that's pretty much it. I went about 20 minutes over today. Does anybody have any questions about anything we talked about or want me to cover something again uh, before we quit? I'd be more than happy to do that for you before we shut down. <clears throat> Richard, are you familiar with Mitchell On Demand for automotive? Yes, I yes I am. We have that at my school for my automotive programs. Oh, nice. Um, is there a sense, anything similar for um, appliance world? <laughs> I mean, the diagrams with all these highlighted lines. Um, reach out to me on the website through the communication, mm -hmm. and, and and just put your name, and I will reply I can't do it through YouTube someone asked about books on YouTube and I tried three times to reply to someone that go to my website and I'll get you access and YouTube kept shutting it off <laughs> so if you if you email me through the website I'll reply I have some practice uh, books on meters and wiring diagrams pictorial and schematics that I can give to you, you can print out and they have a washer diagram and they, they say close these switches and trace through the active circuit and the next page is the answer. So you could check the answers and then if you want um, you can question me on the next class and say hey I went through this and I didn't understand why it did this because there are a couple circuits if you don't know how they work you can't do them. So if you guys want if you want those books and stuff Individually, email me on the website, and later this afternoon, I will reply with links to actual books I have in my drive uh, that we send out to people who come to our hands-on electrical classes. 
Thank you. All right. Is there any other questions, guys? Uh, thanks, Rich. Well, thank you, guys, and uh, uh, you guys have a great weekend, okay? Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Richard. No problem. Good night.